In this video, I'm going to look at how to draw a histogram, or otherwise referred to as a frequency diagram. Now, there seems to be a little bit of confusion between what is a histogram, what is a frequency diagram. At this stage with GCSE Foundation, usually we don't refer to a frequency diagram as a histogram, mainly because we don't want to get it confused with the type of histogram that students doing a higher GCSE will look at, in which case we'll be considering frequency density. In this case, what we'll be looking at is going from a frequency diagram, a frequency table like this, and then drawing it as what would look like a bar chart, okay, with bars of the same width. Um, so you will notice that I've made sure that in my data I've got bars of exactly the same width each time. Um, in higher, when you look at frequency density, you can have bars of different widths. And that's why you get into a much more complicated problem. Okay? And that's why we generally refer to those as histograms and um, these as frequency diagrams. And I'll explain what a frequency polygon is in the next video. So, we're going to be going on to the frequency diagram for this and trying to draw one. Now, I'm going to do this freehand. When you do an exam, you've got to use a ruler. Okay? So, do as I say rather than as I do. Now, we can see that the heights are going from 100 to 150. So, I don't have any heights below 100. And so, I'm going to use that, um, well... I probably best not use that technique because I'm using a bar, drawing bars. So, um, right. I want to go with frequency. Oh, I'll use uh, that along the side. I'm, I've got it. All right. Here we go. Um, so I'm going to start with the heights, and that's going to go along the bottom. So in order to start, rather than starting at 100, I'm going to use a jagged line, which I introduced in the previous video, which allows me to skip out from 0 to 100. So I'm going to start at 100. Then I'm going to go up in even gaps, 110, 120, 130, 140, 150. Up the vertical axis, I'm going to have the frequency. And I best label my axes, so that's height as x centimetres. And the frequency is going up from 5 to 30, so I'm going to have 0, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. And now I can draw my bars. So the first one from 100 to 110 is at 10. So, making sure I try and line this up as best I can. Okay, I'm drawing this freehand so it's going to look a little bit wobbly. So from 100 to 110 we're at 10. Then from 110 to 120 we have 5. And then from 120 to 130, we have 20. So that's up there. And then from 130 to 140, we've got 25. So slightly taller. And then from 140 to 150, we have 30. So slightly taller again. Okay, and that is what my frequency diagram would look like. Now, there are some differences between the bar chart that we learned how to draw earlier in an earlier video to this frequency diagram. The difference is that there are no gaps between my bars, so that means that with no 
gaps, I am looking at a continuous line. And so I am looking at continuous data. So I don't have any gaps that we use the gaps, the bar chart, for discrete data. But we can use a frequency diagram like this when we're considering continuous data. So that's really the main difference here. You still must have your labels of the axes. You must have the bars of the same width. And if appropriate, you can employ this jagged line to identify that we've missed some values out so that we don't have to have this big gap between zero and the start of our bars. Okay? So the next video we're going to be looking at how this differs from the frequency polygon.